After returning to a location dubbed Enchanted Lake, Perseverance attempted an abrasion operation on a rock too weak to handle it. The rock shattered into pieces, revealing a paint-like purple coating that defies easy explanation. On this episode of Mars Guy. In episode 75, I showed how Perseverance had conquered the large sand ripple that had challenged its self-driving system. Now Perseverance has reached its intended location to revisit the finely layered rocks it first encountered about five months ago upon arrival at the Delta Front. Here's a stadium for scale. The first drive away from the ripple was not without challenges, though. You can see how the self-driving system struggled with wayfinding, doing a loop before heading off in the right direction, covering a respectable 220 meters in the process. The new location is opposite the one it pulled up to in April. On the ground, there's a nice view of Kodiak Mesa, the eroded remnant of the ancient Delta deposit. And you can see the tracks where Perseverance was parked. Here's a model of how that might have looked, and here's Mars Guy for scale. There's an abundance of flagstone-like bedrock, and here's the slab that was chosen for potential sampling. This process always begins with a close-up inspection with the arm-mounted camera named Watson. When that looks good to humans in the loop, the coring drill gets deployed with at least 300 newtons of force to preload the stabilizers. This action lifts the rover a bit, creating the illusion that Perseverance can move the world. Another two saws passed before the abrading operation was executed, probably to check if the preloading had fractured the rock. It didn't, but the abrading operation did. Like drills used for concrete and stone on Earth, the Perseverance drill has a rotary percussion action, which can be pretty dynamic. The result in this case was to shatter the rock, which apparently was too weak for the dynamic forces. So obviously no sample coring was attempted. But the Watson images of the wreckage are pretty remarkable. Surfaces previously hidden by a thin layer of dust are now exposed, along with new exposures on fractured pieces. Some of them are notably purple and shiny. Some surfaces are a mixture of purple and brown, and along a broken edge, it looks like a thick coating. For longtime viewers of this channel and followers of Perseverance, you've seen this purple coating before, but that was way back on the crater floor among the igneous rocks there. This is the first time that the purple coating has been clearly observed on sedimentary rocks. So now we know that the coating is independent of rock type but we still don't know how it formed. If this was on Earth, no one would think twice about coated rocks. They're all over. That's because there's lots of water to contribute to the process, and there's lots of microbial life available to help make some types of coatings, like the desert varnish I presented in episode 72. So did the water in ancient Lake Jezero contribute to the purple coatings? If so, how could they remain after billions of years of erosion? Preserving a coating on Mars or Earth means that its formation has to outpace its erosion. And another big question, given how common and widespread purple coatings are in Jezero Crater, why haven't we seen them at any other landing site on Mars? Both Gale Crater and Gusev Crater had a lake, but purple coatings were not spotted by the rovers there. Definitive answers may require the return of some of this material to labs on Earth. Perseverance may get another chance at it on its new rock target, which already shows hints of the mysterious purple coating. <laughs>